What's going on, everybody? How you guys doing today? Hey, how you doing? So I decided to do a new video, and this one will be the start of many, many more. This is going to be our top fives, top tens, tops, whatevers. This one in particular is going to be our top five characters of all time in our own opinion and why we love them the most. Mine would definitely have to be Scion. Scion is pretty much that ball sack douchebag dude that you just know runs in, gets kills, and comes back out. There is no stopping this dude. Typical. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. You got that, uh, that knock up to the stun, to the slow, to the E to the slow, to the, the shield. He's just a monster. He's it, he's crazy, but you know, gotta have versatility. Gotta have his respawn factor. Gotta have his attack damage. He he's he's got the whole package. He's got it all. And without a doubt, he's the first one I would pick if I had to, in any situation. For me, I'm basing my characters upon how much escapability they have. Because I'm a passive aggressive player, um, which is annoying, but yeah. Uh, my number five is Akali. I love Akali because she has um, her W, which can make her go invisible. It slows enemies. It also doesn't it kind of speed your team it gives up. Her, you know, it gives her well, speed it gives you movement speed. Seconds. Um, her Q is the only little bit of poke that she has, but you can actually. I've gotten some kills with her Q. Um, I love her E, it's almost about equivalent to uh, Katarina's W, and the ulti. Let's talk about the ulti. Now granted, uh, Akali is not like Katarina in my opinion, she can't really do much until level 6, whereas Katarina just becomes more of a threat at level 6, um, but I love that her uh, ulti, she can go in and she can go out as long as she has her, her minions around. Well, any enemy unit, she can't jump on your own minions. Oh, damn. It's damn. Katarina, but it's, Katarina. it's still the same concept. For me, it's easy. It's a great, it's easy toss-up. There's no competition. Leona. Leona is by far one of my favorite champions. Ever since she came out, I have not stopped using her. When it comes to Leona, just let's just take a look at all her skills, She's man. She's beefcake. Her stun for her Q is a quick attack as well as extra basic damage. It is crazy. You go in with your E, get that root, go ahead with the Q, get the stun, go ahead with your ulti, get the stun or the slow, and you're just you're just making your enemy team hate life. That is the best part about her. And of course, as you noticed, I do have characters that just seem to like to go in. And if you've seen my videos, you know I like to go in, but I don't like to come out. I like to just go in yeah, and, he, and then suicide. He likes characters with no escapability. Oh, yeah. And Leona... Scion ha at least has his all, but Leona doesn't really have any escapability. No, she but, goes you know, in, she stays in. Yeah, so if the only way I can get out of the fight is if I kill everybody in that fight. Yeah. I am not leaving, man. Let's just let's just give it up to the freaking sun goddess right there, man. Now this number four was tricky, um, only because I've only started using her. Um, I used to use her sparingly, but I'm starting to use her religiously now, and that is Morgana. I love Morgana because I believe she is very, very, she's a very safe character, which you will probably peep with my top five I like. Um, but not only that, she, she can poke, she has great, rather great range with her Q. Her W is great for um, taking down, you know, uh, minions lives for your ADC, which is generally the uh, position I tend to play, which is support. Um, her E, even though it only... Um, just learn that, but it only protects against physical damage. Magic damage. Magic damage down. So it's not going to block you from turrets, but I'll still be the dumbass to actually put my E on to think that it's going to block a turret da -da -da -da. But the best thing about Morgana is her ulti. If she's kind of like Kennen in my opinion. If she goes in and she has Zhonya's, just fuck off. Just don't do it. Um, because she's one of those characters like a Kennen that needs Zanya's in order for her to be safe during her ult. Now her escapability really is kind of like a Luxus in the sense it really comes down to her Q and her E. Um, Luxus, her E is a slow, but with Morgana she has a shield, which is beautiful. And that's why she's my number four. She's bae. She's life. It'll have to be Tom Kench. I thought that would be number one. Nah, there's someone else. 
but really? for Tom Kitch, he would be definitely number three. He is you play him more the than stuff. Three. Well, only because I was trying to, you know, I was trying to get some free love. Oh, okay. But you know, bad players don't let me win, so I had to change it up, be even more easy mode. So let's do it. Uh, his Q, his licky licky, I say. Yeah. Yo, man, talk about somebody that has it all. He has a slow. He has a stun. He has almost a blind and mobile a knock up. He eats you and you can't do anything. The great thing about him is, even if you Q, you still keep his stacks on for his passive and you can get Q again if you have cooldown fast enough to do it again. So yeah, if somebody's trying to come at you face to face, a Master Yi or anybody else, they're gonna be out of luck. Just get some defense and health and you're good to go. And this may be messed up, but to me I thought he was one of the most sexually suggestive characters they've come out with in a long time. And no. League is really infamous for like, um, having female characters look sexual be sexualized as hell but he eats you and he licks you come on now i mean he spits you out too so but then again now, like if i he said he eats you you go in and you never go out yeah that's, you know that's that's life you know, boom but yeah like i said his devour is god's godly like if you fight somebody and they have health he does 32 percent maximum health on your champion it's just it's ridiculous so if you're going tanky and you're not an alistar you don't want to fight this guy head on because even an alistar still loses wow. let's just say if you get more health you do a whole lot more damage and don't even remember if you have teleport and his ulti you're going everywhere on the screen there is no there is no competition for that except when you don't want him to eat you yeah well you know don't get trolled into an enemy nexus just saying don't get screwed up but always watch where he goes next now this was a toss up because I really didn't know how to pick between these last three, but my number three is Nidalee. Now when I first started playing, the one character I really wanted to play was Elise. And you may be wondering, where, what is the correlation here, Gifted One? Well they both have two different forms. Nidalee has her as a human with her long range ass Q, her spear which is awesome, her W, her little traps which kind of drain a little bit of health from you, and then her E which is this massively, I mean they kind of nerfed it, but it's still a pretty damn good heal. And then her ulti which she turns into panther form. Um, and this guy over here said Elise and Nidalee would be the hardest characters for me because you're using two different forms. Now when she uses her ulti, she goes into panther form. She does not waste any mana, right? Y'all. Yep. yep, so you can use, you can spam Q, W, E all day long and nothing's gonna happen. And once again, this plays into my theme of my characters, escapability. She has massive escapability. You keep pouncing every five seconds, then maybe turning into human nidalee and healing yourself and then going back and pouncing you can get away from a lot of shit and that's why i love the nidalee plus the best thing about nidalee is after you use a skill and hit your opponent she gets her panther back easily without lag well without any cooldown turns back into a panther and gets extra speed and range for everything else see i'm just talking about my biases he knows the technicalities of everything but she's freaking awesome so yeah i gotta give it to that next number two Jesus. it'll be a toss-up between quinn and darius no you gotta make up your mind bro. i know but that's why quinn is number two okay without a doubt let's just say this new quinn is uh, broken everybody's using her for jung yeah, I remember when I used to use her back in the day for top, top lane. Yeah, and no one ever picked her, and everybody joined on me until I won them that lane for 10-0. They'd be like, oh my god, what's the Quinn doing top lane? I'm winning, that's what I'm doing. But yeah, so Quinn has her awesome ass Q, which is more than just a blind now. You can't use a skill and you can't attack. Which is a bitch. Which is crazy. Then you have your E. Well, I'm not even, I'm sorry, with the Q, you still have another ability where if you hit a target, it gives them vulnerability. Really? So you can yeah, it gives her a passive again. Oh. So if you use your passive, then you use your Q, you get your passive back. Then if you use your E, it gives your passive to the target you just hit. So you can use your vulnerability passive three times in literally one second. I never knew that. And at the same time, your Alti. Oh my god. Ho ho ho! She gets flown by Valor, and let's just say her movement speed goes from four hundred and five to about thirteen hundred from base. I reached the enemy nexus in 10 seconds and it is so easy to get somebody in. She's become the ultimate assassin to me. Much faster than Talon, much faster than Zed, faster than Katarina. She is the ultimate 
ultimate, ultimate assassin. Next. Now my number two, um, may be somewhat expected, but my number two has to be MF, aka Miss Fortune. Now Miss Fortune, when I first started playing, really wasn't getting a lot of play in my opinion. She was really kind of considered an underrated um, champ because everybody thought MF was weak. But now all of a sudden since it's nothing but damage season, a lot of people are actually using MF and banning MF, which is impressive. Um, her E, which is always the first thing I max out, is beautiful. Her make it rain, it slows, it brings down a barrage of different of bullets that basically um, do what physical damage? It's all magic. Thank you. What? Okay, magic damage. Whatever. Her Q is beautiful because it hits two targets. Double and with then, a second hit. And then if you set it up correctly, you can hit maybe their support and then chunk a lot of health off their ADC if you set it up right, or vice versa. And then let's talk about that W. That W has like really really boost up her well not her movement speed but her attack speed like she can like literally take down towers now not as good as the conventional tower take her down uh, tower killers or turret killers whatever like Tristana and Jinx but kind of almost close to them a little bit not so much but yeah you get the point like it makes her faster and of course that ulti which is the most beautiful thing on earth if you position yourself right, an MF can take out a whole fucking enemy team with the ult. Dunk Master Darius. No shit. The one, the only, Noxian awesomeness. I'm surprised Tom Kench or Quinn wasn't your number Nobody. one. Nobody. It's all about that Darius. Ever okay. since he came out, I have not played anybody as much as him. He was my season 3, season 2 ranked champion. That was okay. it. Okay. After that, oh my goodness. Man, let's, let's get into the rework of Darius first, man. That Q annoyingly strong that annoyingly broken game. he gets 12 percent missing health every single time he hits a target up to three times 36 percent health regained back bruh i took on an entire enemy team got a pentakill with no health and they thought they could kill me no nah, buddy it doesn't matter what build you go with if you can go take you can go full ad you can go attack speed you can go crit you can go whatever you want and you still win because that's just how darius works and doesn't he um stack now well, his passive, it used to stack already, but now when it stacks, it gives you extra attack damage. Yeah. So even if you go tanky, if you don't go any attack damage, if you get five stacks, five auto attacks off of an enemy champion, boom, your attack goes up by a minimum of whatever passive it is. So at the highest, it can go up by like at least 100 or 95 damage. Boom. Who needs a two needs items when you got that? Use your ulti and no longer waste mana at level three. It just smacks the people and you keep on going. No refund, no nothing. You just go. There's no cooldown. You just go. It's amazing. Darius is by far one of the most broken champs without having items. As skills and abilities, he goes, he is the farthest, and he does the best. Screw Jack, screw Kale, that's because they need the build. With Darius, he doesn't need moves or masteries, he'll take you out. And that's why Darius is number one to me. My number one is, of course, probably going to be so clowned. And also, I'm sure he saw it coming. But not, my number one is Nami. Why Nami? Why fishy fish, you may ask? Well, Nami to me is just, to me, with my limited amount of League knowledge, she just has the ultimate package. She has almost the equivalent, no, it's a snare, her bubble, right? It's a snare. It's well, a actually, snare. no, it's more of a stun. You can't attack in it. Okay, there you go. Even though that Callista seemed like she it was, was still bug. attacking me. It was okay, a bug. whatever. It's no way. But she has a bubble. It's a stun, you know? Um, you can't do nothing in it. She has a little bit of a heal. Characters like Sona and Soraka, even though their skills can get kills, but to me, like their primary reason is heals. In comparison to a Nami where her signature thing is her bubbles and then she has her E which speeds you or your enemy or I'm sorry not your enemy yourself or your ally champion up and then the alt the lovable alt which has an amazing range to it it slows everybody and knocks everybody the hell up and it slows on the way down if you really position it right you can also take out an enemy team 
Or you can help your other allied champions take out other enemies. Enemy champions. But to me, she's just a really well-rounded character. She's not really played that much. Um, the only time I really see her use is in ARAM, but when it comes to rank or even normal games, people don't use her. And most people clown me because I use a NAMI and they're using a Nautilus or a, bl a Blitzcrank. But as I usually say, if I can bubble your ass, you're done. You're done. And it's only a matter of time, bitches. So that's my number one. I heart NAMI. I hope you guys definitely enjoyed our top five champions of our all time. It was always a pleasure to play these champions. I'm probably gonna play a game right after this video. <laughs> but if you guys enjoyed, do not forget to like. I would love those likes. Those likes help. They give me life. They give me love. Like Shrek. Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Oh my god. Make love. Make love. Make war. And ah. tell us your top fives. Yeah. Do you agree with our champions? As you can see, I kind of go for more support like oh, champions. It's like nah. That's how he feels, and I feel like he goes for characters that are just like balls to the wall, just like the Marines. No they're, fear, they're going straight in, and they may not come out. I mean, yeah, if you like that sometimes, but yeah, if you enjoy, please give us a comment below of your top five personally of all time. No offense to Marines, and of course, uh, give us just any suggestions for any more videos any top tens top five top sixes whatever you want let us know what we can do in the comment section below and i will see you guys in the next video bye bye see ya